Once you declare that space is an operational domain, what you're saying is that you have vital assets in space on which your collective defense relies. And that means that space can now be a showstopper in terms of the success or failure of military operations. So the more you depend on those space assets, the more you have to protect them. Uh, and you have to look for physical ways of protecting them, of course. Uh, but you also have to tell your adversary that if he believes that he can sort of attack your space assets with impunity, because because they happen to be up there rather than down on earth, uh, then of course he's making a great miscalculation. So I see it as a wholly logical move. Would Russia or China have to destroy a NATO satellite, uh, blow it up uh, before uh, you would declare Article 5 collective defense? Would it be sufficient just to disrupt uh, the activity of that satellite through, for example, spoofing or electronic jamming techniques or through some, uh, a, a cyber attack, uh, uh, for instance. Could it just be hostile behavior? So there's a lot of, you know, sort of detailed, uh, complicated issues that NATO has to work through in defining, you know, what is the threshold for an attack to be considered as an Article 5 collective defense? How bad does it have to be? What extent of the damage? Uh, damage does it have to be and so in a way this gives NATO a mandate to say to its military authorities guys give us some answers yes there have been as I mentioned with this Russian satellite uh, which are maneuvered very close to a Franco-Italian satellite a couple of years ago which then induced France to massively increase its investment uh, in space uh, activity and even to set up a national space command. You've seen uh, China uh, experiment with anti-satellite weapons, uh, not only uh, blowing up satellites, but unfortunately also creating about 25,000 uh, small objects of debris, which perpetually fly around the orbit and always risk colliding, uh, uh, accidentally even, uh, with a satellite and putting it out of action. So uh, space attacks uh, can, uh, can be a form of vandalism if you create create more debris up there and make the traffic management system in space much more difficult for military authorities to, to handle. Uh, but you do have, yes, China uh, and Russia now investing uh, not only in military satellites in space, which unfortunately is not banned by the existing Outer Space Treaty of the UN. We badly need to pay attention to the arms control aspect, the confidence building aspect of space activity as well as we go forward. India has now experimented with an anti-satellite system. Iran has been developing one. So it's not just Russia and China. There are more and more countries getting involved in this particular uh, uh, business. Uh, there's the prospects of launching cyber attacks as the internet relocates to space in the next couple of years. I've mentioned things like jamming, spoofing, electronic warfare, uh, so solar, rays, you know, the, the list is almost infinite of, of potential threats. So NATO, called, of course, clearly mustn't only sort of react to what's happened already. Uh, it would be a good alliance if it did only that. It also has to kind of anticipate where we're going to be in terms of the vulnerability of space systems to these new technologies. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence, of course, is going to add to that. Hypersonic missiles uh, in, let's say, 10 to 20 years time.